so good to have you with us. We're kicking off a new year, stepping in and believing God for some new things that he's gonna do this year in our lives. Are you believing God for what he's got next? You know, the way you get there though is you gotta get out of the past. You gotta step out of some things to step into the new things that God has for you this year. You can't keep looking back. You can't keep holding on to things from the past. You gotta walk into the new thing that God has for you right now. I think a lot of people, they might have thought that uh, uh, January would change everything. Like, like they, they, they had their calendars out. They were, they were counting down the days. Oh, it's just a couple more weeks. Oh, it's just a couple more days and then we'll be into 2021 and, and 2020 is over. And then they, they flip the page and the same old problems are there. Same old issues. You turn on the news, it looks like the same old problems and our, everything looks, to, what happened? I, you look in the mirror and the same old you's looking back at you. I'll tell you what happened is um, January doesn't change anything, but Jesus can change everything, right? It's Jesus who makes the difference, not, not January. I was praying as I do every year for a word for the year. I was praying, God, what is the word that you've got for our church in this new season? And in years past, that word has guided us as a church into what God has next. Uh, a couple of years back, uh, the, the word was freedom. And uh, it, it caused us to take a course, a journey towards freedom and thousands and thousands of people breaking free from their, their past baggage and unforgiveness and walking in the freedom of the Lord. Last year it was movement, that God is moving and we better move with him. And so as I was praying leading up to, to this weekend and this year, I was praying, God, what, what is, what's the word you've got for your church? And, and I kept getting Jesus, Jesus. And I was like, well, that's, not really a word, it's more a, a person. And the Holy Spirit said back to me just as clearly as anything, exactly. I want my people focused on Jesus. I want my people, my church consumed by Jesus. I want them captivated by Jesus this year. Last year we were distracted by by a lot of things, weren't we? There were a lot of things going on in our world. There was a lot of problems and issues and situations that we all had to deal with, the pandemic and racial injustice and tensions and political issues left and right. And it's like God is just wanting to say, I wanna get you back focused on the main thing. I want you focused on, on Jesus this year. I want you looking at his wonderful face. You need to fix your eyes on Jesus. It's always been about Jesus. It's always gonna be about Jesus. And if you're gonna get where you need to go, you gotta look to Jesus. In fact, I was praying on December 31st for you. And I specifically asked the Lord this question. I said, I said God, what is it that you wanna speak to your people? And as quickly as I asked that question of the Lord, the Holy Spirit began to just give me a word for you. And that doesn't happen a lot to me, but it was so clear. I began writing as fast as I could because I didn't want to miss it. And I actually wrote it down because I didn't want to, I didn't want to miss it today. But this is as soon as I asked that question, God, what is it that you want to speak to your people? Immediately what came to my spirit is tell them to stop looking to the world to stop looking to the systems of the world, to stop looking to people in the world and politicians as your savior because I am your savior, says the Lord God Almighty. And then he said, tell them to stop looking to their business as their supply. Stop looking to their paycheck as the provision. I am their provision, says the Lord. I will sustain you. I will hold you. I will be with you. I will carry you. I will provide for you because I am Jehovah Jireh. Look to me. It's like, it's like, you know, when you think about it, many of us, we got distracted in, in 2020. People got panicked by the pandemic. People were fighting over masks and which lives mattered most. And, and, and there were political conspiracies and political debates. And oh my gosh, everybody was, we were, we were distracted last year. And it's like this year, God is saying, don't be looking at all that stuff as you step into the new. If you keep focusing on all those things, you're gonna miss everything that I have waiting for you in this new year. So pick your eyes up, lift up your eyes. Where does your help come from? It comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He'll get you through. Many years ago, my dad and I were on a mission trip down to Central and South America. And we were stopping in several countries along the way with a group of people. And uh, I remember one of the places we were gonna stop was Bolivia. 
And we were supposed to land in this city called La Paz. And if you know anything about La Paz, La Paz, the elevation of the city is over 13,000 feet. So think about when you fly. Remember when you used to fly on planes? When, you, when they would say, we've reached 10,000 feet and they turn on the Wi-Fi and say you could get up and move around. La Paz is 3,000 feet above that. So we were in a plane that was literally from the 1960s. It was an old beat up plane we were on. And we were trying to land on the top of a mountain in the middle of the night, in the middle of an, a lightning storm. The plane was all over the place. And I remember looking at my dad thinking, why did you bring me on this mission trip? There's enough mission for us to do in Palm Beach County in South Florida, why do we need? And he looked back at me, he says, Todd, just look at me, it's gonna be okay. I mean, literally, this was one of those times I thought it was going down. We thought, and my dad just kept saying, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Now he could have been freaking out on the inside, but he kept saying, it's gonna be okay. And I just kept listening to his voice and I kept looking in his eyes and as long as he was okay, I was okay. I wanna tell you something today, your heavenly father is not freaking out. It's gonna be okay if you will just keep your eyes fixed on him, no matter what comes at you this year, he is gonna see you through this year. He's, he's got you. We're kicking off a new series entitled, Which Way Now? Which way now? As we step out of the old and into the new, which way do we go? Because I believe there's not only a new year waiting for you, but there's some new territory that God wants you to take. There's some new opportunities that God is gonna bring to you, but you gotta know which way to go. And let me just tell you this, where you look for direction will determine your destination. Where you look to for your direction is going to determine your destination. It happens every time. If you look in the wrong source, you'll end up headed down the wrong course. This is what happened to a, a girl by the name of Amber Van Heck. She followed Google Maps down a road in the middle of a desert that did not exist. Her car ran out of gas and she spent five days huddled in her car eating goldfish. And you see to the, to the right there, the word help. Someone finally saw that after five days when she was about to give up. Google Maps has led thousands of people that were looking for Mount Rushmore into a little community in South Dakota that they had to put up the sign, your GPS is wrong. This is obviously not Mount Rushmore. And, and Siri led this family down a boat ramp instead of an off ramp and their vacation came to a jolting end. Google Maps has been known to direct people across airplane tarmacs and down the side of mountains on goat paths and people took their cars down the side of a mountain on a goat path. Now most of you have probably never taken your car on a tarmac, you've never probably taken a boat ramp down into the, to the lake, right? But the principle is true for us. Where you look for your direction in 2021 is gonna determine your direction, your destination, where you end up. The key verse for our series is found in John chapter 14, and it's this. These are the words of Jesus. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no one can come to the Father except through me. Now, these are the words of Jesus. He's saying, I am the way. So when you've lost your way, I'm gonna help you find your way. I am, I am the truth, all the reality of everything God has waiting for you. You find it in me. And I am the life. If you wanna live the big life that God wants you to live, that he's created you for, it's only found in Jesus. Now, here's what I know. Nobody knows where 2021 is gonna go. Nobody knows where 2021 will lead and nobody's making any predictions after 2020. You know what I'm saying? But even if you don't know the where, you can know the way. Even if you don't know where it's gonna go, you can know the way because this year you can know Jesus better than you've ever known Jesus. You can walk more closely with Jesus and walk in the way. Look again at that verse, John 14, six. I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes, can come to the Father except through me. You know, throughout the Gospel of John, there's this reoccurring statement of Jesus where he says, I am. It's known as the I am statements of Jesus. And he says things like, I am the bread of life. I am the living water. I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection and the life. And that phrase, I am, is in the present ongoing tense. It doesn't mean I was, 
back a couple thousand years ago. It doesn't mean I might be someday in your future. It means right here, right now, I am God. I am everything you need. I've got you. What do you need? I am is here for you. And so Jesus is very deliberately using this phrase, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, I am. I am is not just a, a pronoun and a verb hinged together. See, throughout the history of the Jewish people, it was one way that God would identify himself to his people. When he showed up in a burning bush to Moses that day in, in Exodus and, and told him he had to go down and set the people free in Egypt, and he said, well, who do I tell him sent me? And he said, just tell him, I am that I am sent you. I am everything you need. I'm your courage. I'm your strength. I'm your provision. I got you. And when you tell the people, tell them, I am has come to deliver you. You just tell them, I am. It was such a sacred term that in, in the Gospel of John chapter 8, when Jesus used the term in reference to himself, the Pharisees wanted to kill him on the spot. In John chapter 8, he says, before Abraham was, I am. I am everything you need. I am fully God. And so here in, in John 14, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now this statement was actually in response to a question that one of his disciples asked him. Jesus had just told his disciples that he was gonna be going away, that he would go to the cross to pay the penalty of sin and that they could not go where he was going. And for the disciples who were all Jewish men, they couldn't fathom a Messiah that would not come and set up a, an earthly physical rule and reign and kingdom. So they were utterly confused. And so Thomas in verse five says to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? And then Jesus answered, I am the way, Thomas. I am the truth. I am the life. And no one can come to the father except through me. His, his response tells us something very important. His response tells us that the destination isn't about a place. It's not about heaven, although heaven is completely real. It's about a person. It's about the Father. No one can come to the Father except through me. And even the way to that destination is through a person, through, through Jesus, through the Son, reminding us that all of this is, is about a relationship that you and I get to have with God a relationship that we have through Jesus Christ, a living, breathing, up close, personal relationship. It, it's not about religion. It's not about do's and don'ts and don't do that and say this and you better. No, it's about getting to know God in a, in a personal way and walk with him every day. And Jesus says, if you wanna do that, if you wanna walk with the creator of the universe, you can, you find it through me. Every time I read this verse, I, uh, I love how politically incorrect Jesus is, you know? Because he doesn't say, I am a way. I'm one of many ways. I am, I am the way. In fact, I, I am the only way. And if you want to know truth, you're not going to know it apart from me. And if you want to know the life that you, what life is all about and the life you've been created for, then you better get close to me, he says. And that is the only way that you're going to find it. It is completely exclusive, only Jesus, and completely inclusive. Everyone can come at the same time. You want this, you want life, you want truth, you want everything God's created for you, you wanna be able to find your way, then you get to Jesus today with everything. Take one step closer to him. He starts by saying, I am the way. Have you ever been driving somewhere and you lost your way? Got turned around, maybe it was before you had Siri or maybe Siri led you someplace you didn't, you're like, this is not right, right? Or maybe you ended up on a detour that you thought would just last for a little while and I mean, it, it took you way out of the way on roads that you never intended it's to go down. Years back, we were uh, driving up in Washington, D.C., and uh, I was, found myself, there's a lot of one-way streets in Washington, and I was heading in the opposite direction of where we needed to go on a big one-way street, and every street I wanted to turn down was, was barricaded. It ended up going miles out of my way to get around to where I needed to go. And that's one thing if that happens in a car and you've got a little inconvenience of a couple miles, but it's another thing when you take a wrong turn in life. And you end up down some, some road that you, you never intended to go down. You, you're thinking, how did I get here? I didn't mean to get here. Or maybe you ignored a one-way sign that God put up right in front of you. And you thought, no, I think I know better. I'm gonna go my own way. And now you find yourself stranded on the side of a road that you were never supposed to go down. You know, I got some good news for you today. Jesus knows the way. 
He knows the way out of whatever you might be stuck in. He knows the way back to where you need to start over. He knows the way forward for what your life has for you because he is. He is the way. And when you follow him, when you, when you follow his word and his ways, you will find your way through whatever might happen and wherever you might be today. And you will find your way to truth. He says, I am the truth. Now that word truth, that, um, we don't even hardly know what that word means anymore, do we? Especially in context today. What, what's, what's really true with, with all the, we're, we're inundated with, with all these uh, false reports and, and fake news reports and this thing and this on the internet and somebody said this and man, well, we believe it. Well, I read it on their Facebook page, so it must be real. No, dear God, if it's on their Facebook page, it probably isn't real. What is truth? Well, Jesus says, I am the truth. If, if you wanna know what is true and what is not true, then you gotta know me. Jesus is our source of truth. His, his commands and his teachings will bring revelation of truth to your life. The Holy Spirit, his spirit, when it dwells in, so he is a spirit of truth. He'll show you what is true and, and, and what is right. He is right. You know, in math, there's only one right answer. Two plus two equals four. You're so good. Doesn't equal five. Doesn't equal three. No, there's no other right answer except four. No student has ever gone to its teacher and said, hey, you know, to me, I think it should be three. You know, you know my reality of what two plus two is, the way I see it should be five. No, no, it's four. There's no other right answer but four. And Jesus is saying in the same way, I am the truth. And you're not going to find truth anywhere else apart from me. Everything you're trying to hold on to will let you down except me. Everything that you're trying to build your life upon is going to fall apart except me. And wherever you're looking for to find what is real and what is reality and what you can build your life into, it's, it's all found in Jesus. I am the truth, he says. And then he says, I am the life. Jesus being the life is a reoccurring theme in the book of, of John, in the Gospel of John. In fact, it's in John 10.10 10, where we read the words of Jesus where he says, I have come that they may have, that you may have a life and have it, look at that, in abundance to the full, say the last words with me, till it overflows. That's the kind of life that Jesus wants to give you, not a barely holding on, barely making by kind of life. He wants to give you this abundant more than you can imagine kind of life. I think some people think God is really only concerned with their eternal life, with life after death. But God didn't create you to die. He created you to live. He put passions on the inside of you. He put his nature on the inside of you. He, 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 he put abilities on the inside of you, dreams down deep in your heart. He has filled you with purpose and divine destiny, but the only way you ever experience that life, his life, is you've got to stay connected to the source of life. If Jesus says, I am the life, and you want to really have life, and you want to walk in life and experience life, then you better stay connected to the source of life. See, in the very next chapter, and remember, this would have all been written without chapters and verses. It would have been one continual dissertation of the life of Jesus in the words of Christ. In the very next chapter, John 15, Jesus continues by saying, I am the vine and you are the branches. And if you remain joined to me and I to you, you will bear a lot of fruit. You're gonna have an abundant life is what he's saying. But look at the next part. Apart from me, say that out with me, you can do nothing. It doesn't say apart from me, disconnected from me, you're gonna have an okay life. It doesn't say, apart from me, you're gonna make it and you're gonna be okay. No, apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. Apart from Jesus, we come up empty, lacking, looking for something to satisfy. We're, we're looking for the meaning of life. We're, we're, we, we just know down in our gut there's gotta be more. Yes, there is, and it's when we're connected to Jesus. When we get disconnected, like the branches that they get disconnected from the vine, they wither up. They can't produce life. They, they're not good for anything but being thrown in the fire. 
See, I'm afraid that too many people, even Christians, are wondering why life isn't turning out the way they thought it would. Well, life is kind of letting me down. God is kind of letting me down. I'd ask you, are you connected to the source of life, Jesus? Not, not do, do you pray a prayer and show up at church every once in a while. I'm talking about connected. Are you connected to the source of life so that you can experience the life that God has for you? I'm afraid that so many people have Jesus as a part of their life, but not as the focus of their life not in the central place of their life. And we're wondering what's wrong. I'll tell you what's wrong. Bring Jesus back to the center. Bring Jesus back to the middle of it all. Bring Jesus, let it be all about Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus, it says in Hebrews chapter 12. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher, the creator and the perfecter of your faith, the one that started it all and the one that's gonna bring you through it all. It's Jesus. So let's stay focused on Jesus. You know, that passage in Hebrews 12 is all about running a race a specific race that God has marked out for you. And the author of Hebrews says the only way that you and I are gonna run our race, the only way that you're gonna win the race that God has marked out for you is by fixing your eyes, fixating on Jesus. Have you ever met anybody that's been fixated on something? Oh Lord, all they can talk about is that thing. Whether it's a hobby, working out, whether it's sports, whether it's uh, you know, some, some, it's, uh, kind of some conspiracy on the internet. Like, blah, 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 blah. All they can do, is a TV show, all they can do is, is binge watch you know, something on Netflix over and over, all they talk about. I mean, they're praying for people on The Bachelor like they're real people. Oh dear God, right? <laughs> Focused. We gotta be fixated on Jesus. We gotta we get our hearts and our minds and attention so focused on Jesus because listen, you've got a race to run, it says in this passage, that is marked out for you. Listen, there is a reason that you have survived 2020. There is a reason that you are come, you've come through this stronger, you've come through it more determined and you may say, well, Todd, I don't feel stronger. I feel a little winded, I feel a little, ah, like a, Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna, I'm worn out to be honest with you. Yeah, but you're still here, right? You're still standing, barely, but you're standing. You're, you're, you, you got breath in your lungs and God's got a purpose for that inside of you. Of course, you're gonna be a little winded. Anytime you start a new workout, doesn't it take a little bit out of you, right? So a lot of people start new workouts in this season. Oh, I go to the gym. Anytime I start a new workout, man, when I'm getting to the end of the reps, I'm like, I can't. Doing the last 10 push-ups, last 10 setups. Oh, I can't do it. But then I do it and I get through it. And then the next day I wake up and I'm a little stronger because I got through it. Now I might be a little sore because <laughs> I got through it, but I'm also a little stronger because I got through it. And do you know that in this season, you've gotten stronger. You, you've developed some muscles that maybe you're not even aware of, some muscles in prayer, some muscles in perseverance, some muscles in dependence upon God that you maybe didn't even need back in 2018, 2019. You didn't need them at the beginning of 2020, but you got them now for what lies ahead of you. You have persevered through some things that you look back on it now and go, I don't know how I made it through, through that. But God got you through that. You persevered through that. You've got muscles now, the strength through that. People let you down. Situations have tried to overwhelm you and take you out, but you're still standing here. So let me ask you a question. How could you think that all of that would be for nothing? No, 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 no. There must be something in front of you that's way greater than what's behind you. God must have something in front of you in this season for you to run to and get into because he's brought you through. But the only way you and I are ever gonna figure that out is by walking in the way of Christ, making it all about Jesus. So I wanna challenge you this year. I want us to, as a church, I want us to make it all about Jesus. The word for the year is Jesus. We're gonna to look to Jesus. When we get distracted by problems, we're gonna look back at Jesus. When we turn on the TV and there's just all oh, this craziness going on, we're gonna turn it off and we're gonna to look to Jesus. When we're overwhelmed by a situation, we're gonna to run to Jesus. We're gonna talk about Jesus. We're gonna to pray to Jesus. We're gonna be all about Jesus like we've never been before in our lives. I wanna give you three ways that you will find your way in this year. The first is this, you gotta walk in the word. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, John chapter 1 says. Speaking of Jesus, every time that you are in the Word, you are into Jesus. Every time you are studying the Word and reading the Word, you are fixing your eyes on Jesus. Now, Jesus will speak to you in in different ways, but most clearly and most consistently, he will speak through his Word to his people. This Word is a lamp unto your feet. It's a light unto your pathway, it says in Psalms, helping you know which way to go. But if you and I never open it up, we won't know which way to go. We'll be lost and we'll be stumbling in the the dark trying to to find our way. Don't do that. Open it up. Open it up. Read it. Now, some of you have tried to read it and you said, Todd, it's been a little confusing. You need to get a version that you can understand. I read and study mostly from the New Living Translation so I can understand it. If you don't have that translation or you can't find that on Amazon or one of our bookstores, you just need to download the free Bible app called YouVersion. It's right on there. You can read it right on there. It's got Bible studies on there. It's got reading plans on there. And every day you can open up the word and every day you can fix your eyes on Jesus. In fact, this week we're coming out with a new daily devotional around the gospel of John. For the next 21 days, I will send you a devotional that'll help you get into the word and focus on Jesus. If you just text the word way, the 441, 441, every day, I'll help you find your way in the word. Now listen, if you've been in Jesus for a while, then you don't need to just start with a simple little devotional. Man, you need to jump into a Bible study. You need to get into a group when we offer them and take an online class and grow yourself in the word, walking every day in the word of God. The second challenge I would give to you is become a person of prayer. Become a person of prayer. That prayer isn't just something you do when you're in trouble. It's not just something you do when you need something from God, but it's who you are. You are a person of prayer in communion and in connection with God through his spirit, through prayer. Prayer is a marvelous thing. It takes this this man and connects him with God through through prayer. It's it's just like talking. You don't have to have some formal language you use with God. You can just come to him and talk to him the way I'm, I'm talking to you about anything that you're dealing with in your life. And, and so you just become a person of prayer by starting in the morning and then just keep the conversation all through the day. You've heard us talk about the first 15. If you're new in your journey with God or you're just trying to restart some things with God, First 15 is giving God the first 15 minutes of your day. Just give the first 15 to him. Five minutes in prayer, five minutes in in a few scriptures in the Bible, and five minutes, put on a worship song, get it on your Apple, Spotify music, and you just listen to that worship song, and it sets the course of your day. And then you just continue the conversation with him through the day. Walk in the word, become a person of prayer, and then I want to challenge you, if you're going to find your way this year, keep Sunday central. Keep Sunday. Sunday, this, what we're doing together, this community of faith where we gather around worship and around the word, make this a priority in your week. Make this time when we come together a priority. Keep it central. I need this. You need this. God actually created this to help us refocus our lives when life gets a little bit crazy. A little bit out of focus. We're getting hit on all sides. We, we don't know which way to look. I mean, you get back in the, in the place of God, around the people of God. Man, they'll build your faith up. When your faith is weak, that's not the time to stay away from church and away from your group and away from God's people. No, that's the time to lean in. And you say, listen, I'm having a rough time. Can you pick me up? Can you help me? I need a little help this week. Make this time central. And I believe that as we do, we will stay focused on Jesus like never before. And we will see him do more this year in our lives as we follow him and experience the life that we've been created for. I wanna pray two prayers today. The first prayer I wanna pray is that all of us would would be more focused on Jesus in 2021 than we have ever been. So wherever you are on your spiritual journey, that all of us are gonna be leaning into Jesus like never before, that we're gonna be doing our part to get into the word, which is Jesus. And we're gonna be in prayer, communing with Jesus. We're gonna be here focused on Jesus. But the second prayer I wanna pray for those of you that, that actually need to start or restart your relationship with Jesus. Maybe you grew up going to church and praying, but you never knew that it wasn't about religion. You never knew that it was about a relationship that you can have with God through Jesus Christ. The only way that happens is as you personally open up your life to him. And so I wanna lead you in that prayer, if that's you. All of us together, would you bow your heads as we pray together? Father God, we thank you for your word today that reminds us of the 
way that we can follow Jesus like never before this coming year, that no matter where 2021 leads, we can know the way because we can know Jesus. I pray that every one of us would do our part this year, that we would be in the word like never before, that we would lean into prayer and our time together every week around your word and worship. And that God, we would follow you to places that we can experience life like you created us to experience it. As we continue to pray with every head bowed, if you're here today and and you actually need to start or maybe restart your relationship with Jesus, this second prayer is for you. I wanna lead you in this prayer. And if you would say, Todd, include me in this prayer that I could have this relationship with Jesus this year and experience the life he has for me right where you are. Would you just raise your hand up? Hold up high across all of our locations. Even if you're at home watching this right now, just hold your hand up. This is for you to say to God, God, I want what you have for me. Let's all pray this prayer together out loud. Just say this, say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be the Lord over my life. Forgive me of all my sins. Make me new on the inside. Help me to experience the life you've got for me. And I will follow you the best I know how for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Anybody get saved?